Good evening, everyone. My name is Philip Gores. My partner is Laura Edmonds. And, the, and tonight we're going to be talking to you about Algregate. It's a thermally responsive flocculant for algae biofuel applications. It's not working. Okay, sorry, a um, bit of an equipment failure. Before we get started, uh, we'd just like to begin by giving a uh, special thanks to our supervisor, Dr. Michael Tam. Um, he's helped us with everything from, uh, from project design and refining our topic to reviewing reports, commenting on organization. He's helped us every step of the way. We'd also like to thank two members of his research group, uh, Dr. Shi and uh, Hannah Zhao. They've both, uh, they both helped with both our um, product, with both our product design and with our synthesis. Dr. Heather Roshan of the CPCC helped us, by, uh, helped us with our algae samples and culturing. Doctors Gavami and McManus helped us test uh, or design our test procedures. And finally, uh, Jen Coggan for helping with everything from paperwork to procurement to just generally keeping us on track throughout the project. So to start off, I'm going to go. I'm going to begin by going over the uh, sort of the current state of the algae, uh, some current promises in the algae biofuel industry, the current state of dewatering and drying technologies, and some of the challenges that they face, and how that led into the design requirements of our project. Then my partner is going to take over to talk about our pro our product design, its proposed mechanism, and some of what we've done to validate our goals. So. To start, algae biofuels are a very, very promising, uh, a very promising potential source for alternative energy. This is first and foremost because they can be produced fairly easily. Um, most of the energy required for the growth comes from sunlight, and they can be grown more or less anywhere that you have a pond or a tank that's exposed to the sun. Um, the growth process has minimal, in some cases, negative CO2 emissions associated with it. Uh, that's a feature of many uh, sources of biofuels. But what makes algae special is also the fact that you can produce a relatively large amount of fuel in a fairly small area, especially when compared to growth in, say, growth over, say, a field when you can do it in a tank or a pond. It's uh, a lot more dense. And finally, these, uh, the fuels produced are com entirely compatible with existing diesel engine uh, design. So there are already cars or trucks on the road that could implement, this, uh, that could implement these fuels. Now, the first stage in uh, producing algae biofuels is in the dewatering. So this is, uh, the algae are normally dilute in solution. They're very spread out. And they have negative charges on their surface that stabilize them. Dewatering is essentially taking the algae out of the dilute solution, trying to harvest them. There are a few technologies that are more commonplace for this. The first is centrifugation, which is more than capable of removing algae, but when implemented on the sort of scale that would be required for fuel production, it would become a very expensive process. There's flotation, which involves bubbling water throughout the, uh, through the tanks, and trying to gather the algae on the bubble surfaces to make them rise to the top. From what we've seen in most technology reviews, it's not capable of, ice, of removing all of the algae on its own, and it seems to always have to be used in conjunction with another technology. Then there are, there are a number of electrolytic techniques, all of which are related to creating uh, an electrical field throughout the tank and um, using the aforementioned negative charge of the algae to draw it towards the, positive, towards the positive electrode. Though these can work very quickly, as you scale up the tank size, as you scale up the algae production, um, the energy required to perform it becomes, uh, grows very quickly as well, and it can become very expensive on a larger scale. Because of this, um, the, most common, the most common technology uh, used in pilot plants and the one that's considered most likely to be implemented is flocculation. What this involves is adding a positively charged, a positively charged or cationic chemical to the algae solution. As mentioned before, the algae are negatively charged, so these positive charges, 
decrease the, uh, they cancel out the electric double layer repulsion between algae, and they draw them together into these uh, chunks called flocks that then settle out of the solution and are much easier to, and are much easier to collect. However, once the flocks have been removed from the, uh, from the general solution, there's still water within them. And this is where the, one of the real bottlenecks of the algae biofuel industry comes in. Removing the water from these flocks is generally the most time and energy expensive part of the process and can add a lot to the final cost. Currently, there are a couple of technologies being examined as possible means of drying it. The first is solar drying, which essentially involves spreading all of the algae out on a flat surface in the sun and letting the sun provide the energy for drying. Though this has a low energy cost, it's very slow and the time loss is still a factor in the fuel cost. Then there's convective drying, which essentially involves taking these algae flocks and um, usually putting them in a large oven, heating them from anywhere to 40, from 45 to 70 degrees Celsius to speed the drying process. This is still fairly low cost, although, uh, well, it has a low energy cost. It's simple and it's faster than just uh, using solar drying. There's spray drying, which involves spraying, the, uh, spraying these flocks out into the air. And when dispersed in the air, these particles, uh, the water can evaporate from them more quickly. Um, this becomes more expensive as it's scaled up. And finally, there's, ro uh, there's roller drying, essentially having all of the algae out on a conveyor belt and compressing, with, uh, compressing them mechanically to try and squeeze the water out. Now, because the flocks have uh, because the flocks are, are a number of different uh, small particles, the algae and the polymers that are held together by electrostatic charges, the flocks can reform after being compressed and, quen and can quite often retain water, which is a serious drawback to uh, using a roller technology. Because of this, the current industries tend to favor the, uh, they tend to favor the convective drying, and thus it's the convective drying that we focused on in our process and in our project. So as I've gone over in the last couple of slides, the dewatering and especially the drying must be made faster, must be made more energy efficient for it to really be cost effective enough for, uh, for the cost of algae biofuels to come down. And that's necessary for them to really begin to see use in uh, the general economy. And right now the, the technology is just not quite there yet. We, just don't have the drying technology that we need. With that in mind, uh, our goal was to, create a, uh, was to create a product that was compatible with what we thought were the most common in industry, the flocculation and convective drying technologies, to speed the water removal during the drying stage, to decrease on the total amount of time that's required in an oven, to decrease on the energy required, uh, and to make the process faster. Additionally, we want it to be able to flocculate during the dewatering phase. This is both for an added functionality and as a way of introducing our product into the algae flocks. As the flocculant isn't always removed from the flocks by the time the, uh, or from the algae by the time the fuel is fully processed, the algae, or the, everything we use must be fairly non-toxic. Non -toxic. It has to be, uh, if any of it's left over in the fuel and it's burnt, it can't hurt anyone, and preferably non-toxic throughout the production process as well. Finally, it must be fairly simple to produce so that it doesn't become expensive or slow to provide for all of these applications. Now, with that in mind, we've, uh, we have come up with a polymer design, which Laura will outline. So the product design we came up with is a cationic flocculant. And it can work much like current flocculants, except for we have added functionality, which will be explained. So this is composed of three parts. The middle, the purple part, is a chitosan polymer. And this is slightly, pos it is positively charged, but not at a very wide pH range. So we functionalized it with GTMAC, which adds more positive charges. And Grafted on is a thermally responsive polymer. So our flocculant becomes hydrophobic at temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius. 
So now I'm going to go over exactly how you would use our product. So you start with algae. It grows in solution in single cells. So it's suspended very well and hard to remove from the water. When you add our flocculant, there's an electrostatic interaction between the positively charged polymer and a negatively charged surface of the algae cells. And it causes this network, a flock. So you can remove the flock from the water by filtration or draining the water. Um, as you see, there's still water left over between the algae cells. So current technologies could bring you to this step, although it is very difficult to remove water from between the cells. So what our flocculant does is it allows a thermal response at any temperature above 40 degrees Celsius, it becomes hydrophobic, so the entire flock will shrink and it'll push water out from inside between the cells. What happened? <laughs> so this allows quick evaporation. I think this is working now. <laughs> so here we tested the flocculation and we found that one portion of our product to 99 portions of this algae that we grew, um, within two minutes, we see complete flocculation and the algae is complete, can be completely removed from water. Here we're testing the thermal response. So this is our additional functionality to the product. This is before the, this is a flock, it's about half a millimeter wide. And um, this is an image before any heat was applied. This is after the flock was heated at 70 degrees Celsius on a hot plate for five minutes. You can see that some of the spaces between the algae cells were removed. And the longest width here is about 670 microns, while this longest width is about 550 microns. So there was shrinkage in size. Um, I want to say this is before complete optimization of our product. So what we haven't tested yet is the proportion of cationic polymer to thermally responsive polymer. And that balance, if we optimize it, we expect to see much better results. Here we're testing the drying rate, so essentially what we wanted to improve to require less energy for drying. Um, and we used a control, which was essentially like our polymer, except for without the thermally responsive polymer grafted on. An aggregate is our product. So here we held our samples in a TGA at 60 degrees Celsius, and we're looking at decrease in mass due to water evaporation over time. So the slope of these curves relates to, or is the drying rate. <laughs> so we were hoping to see a steeper curve with our product, so the green line. We saw a slightly steeper curve. Um, it's about 5% increase in drying rate. So this isn't sufficient for, sufficient for a product, although we believe with some optimization, as I explained previously, we could find much better results. So as a quick recap, our goal was to attempt to improve the, uh, the energy efficiency and the time of the drying process by adding this, uh, by adding this thermally responsive function to, uh, to our flocculant. Now, um, we did, with our flocculant, we were able to show that it is capable of flocculating algae. And we were able to show that it provides some thermal response and some drying, although not to the extent that we had hoped to see. That being said, um, that being said, in, it, um, that's a good way of putting this, sorry, in most cost analyses performed, the, uh, the flocculent cost is actually neglected because it's such a small part of the overall biofuel production process, whereas the energy required for drying is a much larger part. So a 5% change in drying rate, um, a roughly 11% water removal in thermal response could be, is very close to the point where it would be justifiable to expect, say, to expect the cost increase from adding in the thermally responsive polymer 
which even at our most conservative estimate would not be more than a 40% increase on an already negligible total cost. So with all of that in mind, our next steps are first and foremost, as my partner has said, to try and optimize the ratio of the thermally responsive and cationic components to maximize the thermal response and thus to maximize the water removal and the drying while still hopefully balancing this with enough of a cationic component that it's capable of, that we're still able to flocculate a relatively large amount of algae with the, with the amount of product that we use. Finally, we just need to, as we perform these tests, as we get these results and as we optimize it, we just need to further study it, we need to characterize its performance, and we need to use these results to feed into a more, a more optimistic and hopefully more accurate cost analysis. Um, finally, uh, this is just a quick list of references ranging from certain stock photos that we used to sources on our, to, to our sources on the LG biofuels industry. And I would like to thank you all for your time and open the floor for questions. This, the thermally responsive polymer that we use is actually, um, it's fairly common in literature. It's not been used for any applications like this. But the mixture of the MeO2-MA or methoxy ethoxy methacrylate and OEGMA oligoethylene glycol methacrylate are, uh, they're a very common thermally responsive copolymer. And what's special about them is that you can tune the thermal, the thermal response transition temperature, the LCST, based on their proportions. Okay. And, and was it important to functionalize your PET exam liquid GTBA with the MHC? Yes. 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 Um, our because we need the positive charge to flocculate the algae, implementing a, a significant pH change would involve maintaining that pH through the growth tank. So it would be, so it's less expensive, or we predict that it should be less expensive at the very least, for us to provide a slight functionalization than to have to change the pH of a bulk solution. Um, well, we, sorry, we put our, f we usually end up with total, total mass of this, so thermally responsive polymer, GTMAC, chitosan, all together per, per dry weight of algae harvested. It's roughly 0 0.14 grams of this per gram of algae harvested, which is not as, which is not the same, it's not quite as good as a lot of the industry standard polymers, but it's in the same range. So that's one of our trade-offs is the amount that we, uh, sort of the, the mixing ratios of the, the mixing ratios of our polymer versus the thermal response and the improved drying in the next stage. Okay, so when we talked about increasing the cost, that's assuming that we took a, that we took sort of the estimated cost of using chitosan as a flocculant and just added the, started mixing it in with the thermally responsive polymer we produced. If that's the case, there's gonna be a greater material cost and extra steps in the preparation process and that's going to raise it. And of course. Okay, so we did a cost analysis on this product and the thermally responsive polymer is about 40% of the cost. So you can imagine just a cationic flocculant would be that much less. But um, we are trying to save energy in the entire process and we're aiming for 
a reduction in energy usage that would really improve the cost way more than that. The amount of flocculent that you have to use is insignificant to the amount of energy that we would save. So we're hoping to reduce the cost of the whole entire process as well. Um, okay. In, in our case and in our experience, it doesn't. This, it draws the algae together as whole cells, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't go inside them, it doesn't really modify them. The, real, the only real changes that we see are the ones that we were hoping to see, essentially, that it's able to cause aggregation and that it, um, and that it provides the thermal response once the flocks have been removed from the water. We've calculated it theoretically. We, we've only performed, um, we performed free radical polymerization on this, so we suspect that our polymer has a fairly high PDI, but the molecular weight of the polymer as a whole should be, it's fairly low. I know that the chain length is on average about 100, 150 monomer units. I don't remember the final black, uh, blimp, uh, molecular weight offhand. So it's a, it's a short chain. The consideration is that we need to be able to introduce this, uh, we need to be able to introduce our product and mix it in outdoors. So it needs to be, it needs to be high enough that, it needs to be high enough temperature that our product would not cease to function on a hot day. So if it got up to say 35 degrees and our product flocculated out of solution, we'd have to wait until it cooled off to continue using it. So, but 40 degrees for certainly at least in Canada and in, in the climates that we're considering, 40 degrees is sort of the minimum temperature, so requiring the minimum energy input to, um, to have the transition while ensuring that it doesn't fail on a hot day. Yes. So those are inside the algae or it's outside the algae? This is sort of, it ends up inside the algae cell, uh, in between the algae cells. Um, so this, depending on uh, downstream processes and how exactly the fuel is processed, it is possible that some of this ends up in the final product. That's one of, that's why uh, the non-toxic, the safe to handle, part of our design requirements came in because if there was anything in this that was toxic and it ended up in the fuel as a final product or that became toxic as it was burnt, then that would make it unsafe for use. So we had to choose biocompatible, safe materials to build this out of. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. All right.